Now, it's always interesting when new plugins come out from well-known companies, and today we're going to be taking a look at a new one from WP Funnels. It's the free version of Mail Mint. Now, if you want to get into email marketing, automations, and things like that, but you want to keep that inside WordPress, this is one to take a look at. Now, this is the free version of this, and there are several limitations, but for a lot of use cases where you want something really simple and straightforward, this may fit that bill perfectly. So let's go ahead and install it, test it out, and see what it brings to the table. So I'll put a link in the description to the actual download itself. And as you can see, there's an awful lot of information on here, exactly what this does, the features that are enabled and so on. So we're gonna take a bit of a whirlwind tour of this in action so I can show you and just demonstrate how easy it is to get everything set up for yourself. So I've installed the plugin and let's go ahead and activate it. And once we do, we take it over into a very simple step-by-step -step wizard. Now you can skip this if you want to, but I would probably recommend going through it because it sets up some of the basics that you need. So let's go ahead. Let's go next. This is our business information. Now, when it comes to any kind of email marketing, you do need to make sure you include your business address, whether that's a PO box, a registered address, whatever. Legally, you have to do that. So make sure you fill out the relevant information. So I'm going to quickly fill out some bogus information for this demonstration purposes. Once you've done that, we can go ahead, add a logo in, and add the other information you think is relevant. We'll hop over to Next, and this is where we can start to create our lists. Now, your list is just basically a list of subscribers, and you can have subscribers in multiple different lists, and you can tag them with various different things and so on. So as you start to get into more comprehensive list building, you're going to find you want to do some kind of segmentation. So even in the free version, you at least have some of those basic features. So for this example, we're going to create a general kind of catch all email list. You can create multiple lists at this point if you want to, but one of the benefits of having a kind of catch all is that once you've got people going through the automated process, once they've finished all that, you can then just push them over to a general subscriber so they don't kind of like have a series of emails that just drop off and get nothing off you. So this is a good way of having that kind of catch all. You can add a description if you want to, create as many lists at this point as you want. For now, one is perfectly fine. Let's head over now to the tags. So tags are incredibly useful. You can see we've got some examples like free user, annual subscriber, whatever you want to insert inside here. And again, you can create multiple different tags. And then as part of the automation processes that we'll take a look at a little later, this is where you can then do things and then tag users or subscribers with different tags as they kind of move through various different automations or they go into different parts of your email list. So for this example, let's keep this really simple and just say general user and we'll add one more and we'll just call this free webinar just so we can kind of say if we have something running and we want to tag them with something else we could do that here again click next once we finish with that and we are pretty much all done so now we can go straight over to the dashboard or if you've got a file and you want to import contacts generally it's going to be a csv file that'll have things like their name and their email address and so on you can import them at this point for this example though i don't have a list so we're going to go straight to the dashboard and this is the first place you're going to see, and this is kind of where you're going to see a lot of the statistics about any kind of email campaign, subscribers, and so on. It's a nice looking dashboard. It integrates nicely into the WordPress ecosystem, so that's nice to see. And you can see we've got some relevant info, as well as some quick links to do things like add contacts, campaigns, automations, or forms. We've got subscriber growth, any email campaigns, contact information, previous campaign performance, and so on. And everything is very easy to jump over to find out more information or do something else at this point. So first, first of all, let's go ahead and start off with the most important thing, which is adding a form to give people the ability to actually sign up to our mailing list. Let's click on add form. We'll come over and you can see we can choose to create something from scratch or we can use some of the predefined ones. Now at the moment, there are only a handful. So hopefully this is something that will expand as it gets more and more mature. This is still a very, very early product. You can see we can filter these down to pop-ups and fly-ins and fix to the bottom of your screen and so on. So let's take this one as an example. We'll select it. This will then take us over into the editor where we can then customize pretty much every aspect of this. First of all, you can give this a title. We can choose what we want to assign it to, whether we assign it to a list or a tag. So for this example, we'll assign this to general subscribers and we'll leave that as it is. But if you want the tags, you can see all the tags are available inside there, including all tags. So we'll leave that as it is. Over on the right hand side, there's all our settings. So confirmation type, do you want to stay on the same page, go to a specific page or go to a custom URL? And if you want to, you can apply messages to this 
what happens after the form submission. Nothing, do you wanna hide it or reset it? You wanna choose the display options where this is always visible and so on. And again, you've got things there like form types. You can see we can change the type of this if we've selected something from the original templates and we wanna make changes or if we've created something from scratch and we wanna make changes, it, you could do it inside here. You can control the animation type, you can control the appearance, and you can select display it on what pages, so you can be very specific. So if you're running multiple different campaigns and you only want to have different pop-ups or different banners on different pages for different campaigns, you can manage all of that from inside you. And you can also manage things like the color scheme for the buttons and so on, and everything is very simple and visual inside you. You can check out what it looks like on the various different types of devices from desktops, tablets, and mobiles. So you can see this will show us what it look like. And you've also got the short code you can use. And if you want to use the short code, you can do. If you're using Gutenberg, you've also got its own native block, which you can just pull in and select the form or whatever kind of pop-up and so on you want to use. We'll say we're happy with the look of this, and we'll click on Update. You also got these three dots. You can say this is a draft if you're working in progress and you don't want to actually activate it yet. Hit Update. We've now created our first form successfully. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and start using this. So we can choose where we want this. Currently, this is going to be on pretty much everything if you want to use it. But we can, like I say, choose exactly where we want. So select pages. You want to say display on all pages. We'll say yep. Display on all posts. Yep. And if you had WooCommerce installed, you could display on all products as well. Again, let's go ahead and update that. And now that form has been updated. So now every page post on our site will have that as part of it. So taking a look at one of our posts or pages, you can see there's our banner section at the bottom. So we can go ahead now, fill in the relevant information, our email address, and just hit submit. And boom, we are done. We've been added to that list. But there's a few other things you want to check out before we complete this and start adding people into our user list. Let's come back over into MailMint and let's go into our settings. Now inside here is control over all the different options we have as part of the free plan. Now you see some things are locked behind the pro plan, but we've got still more than enough to kind of get up to speed and test this out to find out if it's going to do what we want. So you can see we've got our business settings. So again, if you want to change any of the business information or we want to add extra things in like phone numbers, change our address and so on, change our logo, we can do that. We can also come in and our social media so we can add those into our email campaigns and so on. Coming into email settings, we can choose what the name, the from name is, the reply to, the addresses, and all that kind of good stuff. Importantly, is the double opt-in settings. Now, whenever you have anybody sign up, you always want to enable double opt-in. This is kind of a legal requirement in a lot of countries, and this means that when someone is subscribed to an email list, they have to confirm that subscription before they're fully subscribed and they will receive any kind of emails from you. But what you can do is you can confirm, you can enable this opt-in, you can choose what email subject, the body, so you can customize this and you can choose exactly what you want to do after a confirmation from the email where they've clicked the link, what happens, do they want to redirect to a page, redirect to an external URL, you can pick pages you have, and MailMint will automatically create a couple of pages for you, things like opt-in confirmation, preference, the unsubscribe confirmation, and so on. Again, you can totally customize these and do what you want with them. All very simple to work with and fully customizable. General settings, this is where we've got a range of different options to do with unsubscribing. But you can control, again, your confirmation page, which has been set up automatically for you, but you can change that, update it, create your own custom one should you want to. Redirect to a page, redirect to external URLs, choose the page you want to go to. You know, it's all relatively simple and straightforward and pretty much obvious. But you can see we've got things like prompt new users to join the mailing list. So if you have the ability for people to join up to your website, then you can make this as an option. Though it'll they can opt in at the point of sort of sign up to join up to the mailing list. And the same goes for commenters. So if you allow comments, you can have them subscribe as well. Then you've got your compliance settings. And this is where, this is something I really do like to see. You can choose to anonymize, anonymize IP addresses for contact analytical data. I would generally recommend if you're in a country like Europe where you've got GDPR or you've got the American kind of equivalent and so on, and this is going to spread out further afield, it's great to see that anonymization of IP addresses, which is something that you know people can be identified from, you can anonymize that inside the plugin itself. Awesome job. And if you want to, you can have this to remove users if they are removed from WordPress itself. And again, webhooks is a pro-only feature. But once you've gone through and set all the settings up, save your settings, everything should be good to go and ready to start working. So heading back over to the dashboard, you can see I've got one contact signed up 
But you can see we can go ahead and we can add contacts in if we want to. So you can see you can manually add contacts, which is nice, quick and easy. You've also then got how many subscribed and so on. So you've got an overview of information about them. And you can see we can come in and we can view the information about that particular subscriber. So we can see what lists are they subscribed to. We can add them to lists or remove them from lists. You can find out any information about them, when they subscribed, any activities. So as your list grows and your campaigns go out and more users come on board, you'll be able to have access to all of this information. And then coming over into campaigns, this is where we can start to create our email campaigns. So you can click to create a new campaign. Now, again, this is a limitation of the free version. You could only create a regular standard campaign. You can't create sequences or sequences for automation. That's a pro feature. But let's create a standard campaign. Now you can go ahead, you can give it a title, you can select who you want to send it to, again, lists, and we've got tags, segments if you're using the pro version, so it's good to see you have segmentation inside the pro version, but you can still segment things based upon the list and the tag or tags inside here as well. So you still have at least some basic control. Give your subject line, give it your preview text, who it's from, who to reply to, all those kinds of things, and then you can go ahead and you can design your email. So coming over to design your email, you can see we can start from scratch like we've seen with the sign up forms, or we can go ahead and we can choose one of the predefined ones and then we can customize it. So for example, let's choose this one that will import everything for us. And now we can go ahead and customize everything. You can switch between the template and you can switch between the classic option, which is basically just code. So if you've got a template already designed, you could go ahead, drop that code inside here or you can visually do it. And you can see when we select something, all the options are available on the right hand side. Source code is available for JSON and MJML. And you can simply go ahead and drag and drop whatever you want in. So if you want to add a button in, drag it into where you want it, drop it in there and then customize the options. But it is very, very nicely done. It is professional, it's smooth, it's quick to operate. And then once you've finished it, you can send a test email, you can save this. You can also go up and export this as various different formats. You can save it as your own template. We can click on next. And this takes us back in now and we can go ahead, add any information we haven't added in. Or once we're ready to go ahead, we can save this as a draft or we can send it. So pretty cool, pretty simple and straightforward. Now, next on our list is automations. Now, automations, if you've never used any kind of automation, whether it's to do with just standard automation, automation inside WordPress or a tool like Pabli or Zapier, or if you're using it inside email marketing, it all operates in a very, very simple and straightforward fashion. You have triggers and you have actions basically. So let's go ahead and create a new automation. We get to choose a starting point. We've also got the option to give this a name. So let's call this test automation. Let's click on add a starting point, And this is where we can choose what we want to kind of be the trigger. What happens to kind of get this automation flow to start working. Now we are relatively limited at this point. So it would be nice to see more of this being added as this kind of grows and expands. But currently we have two options, MailMint options and WordPress options. So MailMint when a form is submitted or WordPress, if there's a new user registration or a user is logged in. Let's go to MailMint and say form submitted. We want to have this connected to that form we've created. So we'll choose the form from the right hand side, which is our ticket discount. And that's the trigger. So now when that form is submitted, what's going to happen? Currently, nothing. But let's click on the plus. And now you see we have a different range of options. Again, we are still relatively limited because this is the free version. But again, it would be nice to see this expand for both the free and the pro version as this develops and move forward. But let's just say we want to send an email. Let's click on the plus and say we want to add a time delay in between. So you can see we can easily add extra steps in, move things around, all that kind of stuff. So let's choose our time delay and we'll say we want to wait one hour after someone subscribes and then we're going to send them an email. So what email are we going to send them? Well, we can go ahead and we can customize all that inside here. We can design our email in exactly the same way as we've just seen. We're going to preview text, the subject line, the reply, all those kinds of things. So let's just choose a design your email option. So we'll just choose the email confirmation. We'll select that. And again, if you want to customize this, all those options are there. Let's just for now, let's just save this. Once that's done, you can see now we have our email in place. We've got our delay in place. And then we're going to click on plus and we're going to do something else. So we're going to say we want to assign tags. So we can say we want to add that. And we say once this is kind of completed, we're going to say we want to tag them with free webinar, for example. It doesn't really matter too much in this point. And you can tag them with multiple different things. So we can now see we've got another tag in there. Save this. We can start this or we can say save as draft. 
So there's our first flow. There's a trigger, there's a time delay, there's an email being sent out, and after that email's being sent out, there's a, a signing of a tag. So now we've set up our automation, we've got our trigger, our time delay, our sending email, and we're gonna sign a tag. We could go ahead, start the workflow, or we can click to say save as draft, and we can also go ahead and collect statistics. And you'll see this now tells us things like how many people are in this flow, the percentage of people that have completed it, those kinds of pieces of information. And again, you can see you start it, so we can say we'll start that workflow. It now tells us it's active, we can get a report from this, you know, all those kinds of things. So jump back over the dashboard, this now updates with all the relevant information about the contacts, the campaigns, the forms, those kinds of things. And as this starts to grow, we'll start to get more data, which we can start to use. What are my thoughts on this? I think if you are looking to get your feet wet to find out if email marketing is something you want to do and you want to keep it all inside WordPress itself without using external services like MailChimp or MailerLite and so on, this is something to check out. It's still early on, so I wouldn't at this point in time put all of my eggs in that one basket. I think it needs to mature a little bit. We also need to see some more tools and automations coming on board, more templates and so on. So again, I think this is something that as it grows and expands, we're gonna see more of those, or hopefully we'll have more of those features coming in. What the pro pricing is going to be and what you're gonna get with that extra on board, what you've seen already, I don't know at this point in time, I've got no affiliations with these at all, but I think it's something worth checking out, testing, and like I say, if you've got a very small list and you just wanna keep it really simple, it may be a tool you wanna to check out for yourself. But as always, I'm gonna pass it over to you. What are your thoughts on this? Have you tested it out? Have you used WP Funnels? Are you used to the company? And what are your thoughts with them? Let me know all that in the comment section down below. As always, all applicable links are in the description. My name is Paul C, this is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.